Hello and welcome back to another episode of Battletech. My name is Saigon and today we're continuing the Swan Song campaign. It's time for Double Age and another nice flashpoint before we're hopefully getting our Thumper in the next flashpoint that has already queued itself up. We are about 300 days in. Yep, 300 days in. And we have a full heavy lance, but we can't use them this time as the tonnage requirement says light. That's okay. Let's go in and help the Confidian Confederation to defeat the uh, Federated Sons, who already hate us. So the Capellian Confederation, we might even get up to a liked status. In terms of preparing for this, the Orion is potentially a bit too heavy. We're going to use that Thunderbolt here as our LRM boat, the other Thunderbolt as the normal mech. And let's get this Griffin in, double Griffin time. It's a strong mech, so might as well use them as the frontliner. We wanted to give Lily a chance to gain some more experience. So for now, what are we doing with Hogbite? Hogbite should be the leader of this squad. Yeah, Bradford, you gotta sit this one out, buddy. Fantastic, good. Lily is in there, Reaper, Hogbite's leading, and Mox. Mox is going to use the multi shot with the LRM boat. And our maximum load is 240 tons. We're using all of that. And you can see there is a max on each of um, our, our uh, mech warriors, a max tonnage on each of the mechs. So we're using that as well. It's going to be fun. I really like those limitations. They make the entire uh, flashpoint reasonably difficult. So you can't just stomp in with four or five assault mechs. Okay. We are about to deploy. A million credits are on the line. I took the payment instead of the salvage options because realistically speaking, with only two and a half skulls, there shouldn't be too many mechs in here that we want. Scout the forward base and this is going to be a fun fight around this ledge here. Uh, if you guys remember, we had used this ledge in, in a much earlier version. And there is quite a bit of tactical prowess that you can uh, Copy that. use to your advantage I read you, Commander. Moving by out. playing alongside that ledge. We'll go. Good. We are sprinting. Location confirmed. And I would suggest we're just placing ourselves up here it's quiet it is way too quiet and one thing that you can rest assured of uh, when you play Battletech is when things look too good to be true they typically are too good to be true don't need to tell me twice Okay, so we're positioning ourselves alongside the sledge. High ground is important. High ground with good uh, defensive cover is even more important. Moving out. Yeah, and we're just going to sit this one out up here. I'm picking up a new sensor trace. Looks like enemy. Oh yeah, total surprise, right? Total surprise. Who would have guessed? Enemy jumps in. Standing by. Aye, aye. I already mentioned it. It's a, it was a complete surprise that we are being ambushed for once. Let them go first. The right Should be. Good to withstand all of their attacks. I was actually expecting an ambush from down here. Oh, all 
right, Reaper is going to be out of uh, service after that one. And some more significant damage. Reporting heavy damage. Commander. Let's stand up here, so... Up here. Moving so out. that we have a solid standing. We're going to get Vigilance for the full defense bonus. And let's just go for the Vulcan. Affirmative. That's a fantastic hit. Thunderbolt moves up and let's see how well our LRM boat does. Oh my lord, that is punishing. The Vulcan is almost down. Holy shit. LRMs against exposed targets can, uh, can be quite devastating. Moving over here, unfortunately, we lost an entire round due to this ambush. In all fairness, didn't fully remember the mission here. But we still have 60% damage reduction I think we're going to take the first shot Roger that. What's the flank? okay took a hard hit there aye aye that guy just offered his back to us And if we're precision striking, maybe it was actually not that bad of an idea, right? But rear attacks should pass through his um, cover. Well, all things considered, it was a pretty bad idea. We're getting some more heat. I can't take much more of this. That Vulcan also showed his back. Awaiting wow. orders. So we could try to move. Somewhere over here. And then just brace. Not the worst idea because we're already almost overheating. But that's still 60% damage reduction plus an evasion blip that we gained from this maneuver. You can see we're taking we're continuing to take heavy damage and soon. Taking heavy hits, Commander. Yeah, soon a couple of uh, our slots will be opened. Alright, leg is open. That was foreseeable. Blowing through my armor. They got the drop on us, so... I, can do. I am not terribly excited about uh, the outcome of this battle. Let's see. Can we hit the guys up here, the hunchback? We could. All right, not the best maneuver and the Griffin is in the way. So our direct shots with the medium laser 
aren't perfect, but this Vulcan here should go down. Lots of stray shots, which will open up that second Vulcan. Not a perfect position for the Thunderbolt here. I fully appreciate that. But at the same time, uh, the rear end shots here maybe will be killing the Vulcan in one go. So yeah, it's a trade-off of not being in the forest, but at the same time just Goddamn, killing the guy in one go. Good, we're tanking in return. And that was to be expected. Warning. Armor low. Yes, Commander. Waiting on you, Commander. Alright, the trebuchet over there. Let's move uh -huh. over. And delay his turn a bit longer. Uh -huh. Griffin moves over to the other side. We're continuing to delay his turn. Moving his initiative Copy all that. the way up. Or down to one, rather. By doing that, we're purchasing some time. And with those extra hits, we're hopefully going to either knock him completely down or... Maybe destroy a weapon or two. And a bolt moves forward. Let's go. Fantastic. But I should have potentially used uh, the... LRM carrier first, just to knock him down. Good. The trebuchet is no longer a huge threat. Aye, aye. Moving up here with Griffin. And we're continuing to follow up. And just make sure that he does not even get another hit. Yeah, he was trying to de deal as much damage as he can, the Hunchback. Even, yeah, used up all of his heat. And look at that. In return, we're getting a nice little hit into the back of uh, him. Oh yeah, this time we're going to use our LRM ba battery. Moving over, no medium lasers, just the LRMs. And here we go. <laughs> okay. Well, they got a jump on us, but we turned it around nicely. Only a few mild injuries. I hear ya. Coordinates received. Affirmative. Piece of cake. Copy and yeah, there's always an advantage in them playing extra reckless, right? So both of the Phoenix Hawks, they they're job is to go in with a small ranged um, or support weapons rather Confirmed. and whilst that is great and all way. the phoenix hawk really has an advantage of having that extra range in order to do that so the ai completely messed it up in my perspective by uh, trying to get into the near arc of a heavily fortified um, griffin and the few mgs they were just 
not do, do uh, dealing any damage. Okay, the flamers heated um, heated us up, but that was really it. And with the play, they opened their own rear to be further attacked. Vulcans, yeah, not Phoenix Hawks, Vulcans. Those were the two that had extra range. They do have uh, the um, the control unit that gives you extra range for support weapons. Good, we got some bad news. We stole some really hardcore military info. So, offer MIM to Spy House Leo? Nope, we don't want to do that. Okay, fair enough. We're. We're using the spy in order to spy another house, one that we are not necessarily friends with. So the next one, double agent part two. Is fighting for the Torian uh, Conoquet. And it's a straight up battle for a bit more than 1 million. I think that's fine. Unfortunately, this will not salvage all of our relationships. Good. We got Tigan out here with the sensor lock. And everybody else seems to be fine. So let's jump right into the Highland battle. Good. We're ready to deploy again. Time for some battle, some Royal Rumble. Should have potentially stick with the House Liu. Oh, I remember that one. Oh, I remember that one. We are going to fight a massive battle here. This is such a fantastic mission. I love it. Okay, so if I if my memory serves me well, we're actually fighting against two or three different other forces. Affirmative, Commander. The Torrents are together with us in this one. Let them take the first step. Enemy contact. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. It is exactly as I was uh, thinking it would be. Oh yeah, that was one of the best missions. I am looking forward for it because all of a sudden here, everything goes wild, right? So there is like one enemy faction. This enemy faction is dropping as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to be the assholes Copy that, Commander. just staying back for once. An assassin, blackjack. All right. Good to go. Lily moves Moving over forward. here. Fantastic. Yeah, that move, dear friend, was not clever. You are not putting an assassin out in the open just to test whether or not that's a good idea. Good. Moving over here, and besides being clustered, we're actually doing fine. So now things are starting to become more and more interesting. The forces from House Liu are now fighting against us, as well as Steiner. <laughs> and our our comrade has just 
been sniped by an urban mech. That is insulting. Like, urbies do one thing really well, which is jumping in and then just pound, pounding that huge pile of crap onto your head with their AC-10. Yeah, the only weapon that they do have. They are complete garbage elsewise, but if they hit, you might end up uh, being cored, as they say. So the core of that uh, assassin has been blown out. But yeah, Liu is in between the Steiner and the Torrent forces. Let's see how those guys are doing a Royal Rumble here. Our friends have already received a bit of a backlash and are now moving back because they are scared. Enemy Centurion takes some damage, okay. Liu is in a in a poor position, specifically there. Centurion here is highly exposed. Hot dropping like that into the middle of a battlefield is not a smart idea. Wolverine moves back in tranches. And the Centurion slowly but surely is getting just chucked down. Alright, what is he going to do? He's just bullwalking? Are you kidding me? There was forest back there. Oh my gosh, I can't believe how bad the AI is from time to time. Waiting for orders. It's painful. It's it's actually painful to watch how bad the AI is from time to time. Oh gosh. All right. Location confirmed. Moving to here. Let's give ourselves vigilance and precision strike, so that we're opening. The Wolverine from the back. <laughs> you shouldn't turn the back on uh, onto our forces. And since we're in the water, we haven't even really used any heat. Alright, flanking from over here. There is a Vindicator. I got you. And let's try to hit him. Good, very good. Lily has a slightly obstructed view, but that is okay. Got it. We're still keeping our cowardice position back here. Mainly because I also want uh, to see how the fight between all of these guys is going. Moving into the water because the Thunderbolt gets quite hot. But if we can unload on that guy here, that's well worth it. Alright, time to take a good look at what the enemy is doing. Foreign forces are jumping back in order to like meet up with us again. The Irby tries to score his second kill. It would be so incredibly funny if that Urban would be the MVP of uh, the Steiner forces. Okay, how's Leo? Tries to go for the Vindicator. Locust moves in. That was a poor move, my friend. All right, Griffin moves up. Moving into full cover. And although that Centurion here has seen his fair share of getting beaten up, there's always more room to hit the punching bag. Vindicated just stands there, are you serious? Oh boy. Sometimes I just wonder about the AI decision making. He he's standing in the open with zero evasion blips. He, he's almost asking for it, right? Yep, but luckily there will always be another sucker. What can I do for you? Moving out. All right, Griffin moves over. A 
Let's go for that Vindicator. Okay, the Vindicator will die in the next turn. He's going for the Urban Mech, which is too much of a threat. And Phoenix Hawk versus our allied Vindicator. This guy here, I, I'm worrying a bit about him. And for some reason they have detected that that Urban Mech is Ready the shit, board. so they are continuing to just pound on him, I suppose. Moving up, and time to finish this guy here. Let me just make sure we're clear. The assassin is a stinker as well. Yeah, I think 20 rockets should be enough to get that Vindicator down. Well... Not completely, unfortunately. But I wanted to also reduce the evasion blips of the assassin. That Vindicator has an, has an open part, you can uh, see it. Interesting multi-shot suggestion here. We're vigilancing uh, to have cover and defense. That one isn't bad. Just moving a tiny bit back. And let's see if we can actually hit that assassin. Fantastic. Just wanted to make sure that the guy knows what's up. Good. By now everybody already knows that that Vendicator here is the punching bag. And yeah, the knockdown finally killed, it killed the pilot. Irby still tries his luck, tried to pour this Vindicator. But left himself really exposed here. And the Vindicator is tanking a lot. Now the right call for that Vindicator would be to immediately orders, like move it. away. And leave it. Thunderbolt continues with Vigilance. And let's make sure that that Assassin here doesn't get a chance to act. I like staying in the water with uh, heated mechs because the Thunderbolt can continue to shoot everything around as long as we give him vigilance. That was not a very smart move from the Vindicator. I mean, I guess he did the best defensive action he could, but it was really not a lot. Fantastic. He's reducing the defense of the Locust. <laughs> and the Centurion. Oh. Moves in. Tries to go for that. For that uh, one million dollar play. I'm, there. I'm saving some heat. And... We're going to snack away the Locust here. Kind of closing our ranks and making sure that the Torrent forces are still ahead of us. That Centurion is now taking a lot of heat. But to be honest, he's still standing, so he did a really good job with that. 
like it paid out i i wouldn't say the play itself was good the play was incredibly reckless but it played out locust in the back nothing uh, for him to be protected All right, Thunderbolt moves into the water. No problem. And let's have a multi-target. One over here, one over there. Killing that locust. I potentially should have focused. I was almost thinking the locust uh, would uh, be killed, but I was wrong. Phoenix Hawk is now knocked down, which is interesting. Oh my god, the Urby has scored him! <laughs> that is so good! The guy had two kills. Getting one on an urban is already fantastic. Hey, did, did the Centurion actually just attack us? What are your orders, Skipper? That is rude. That's the first damage that we've taken in the entire fight. There are plenty of targets around that he could have selected, but no. Ooh, the Vindicator is still tanking. And all of a sudden everybody hates the Phoenix Hawk. Who is now slowly getting up. What? Alright, okay, buddy. That's not going to go well for you. I'm, I'm just going to be honest here. I gave you a fair chance, but you wanted to F it up. Yeah, we're, we're just using neither Vigilance nor anything. That's just going to be a kill. That's what you get from attacking Enemy mech destroyed. Skipper. Waiting on you. What's up, Commander? The one thing that I do not appreciate is getting into the People fight. In the I was very clear that you could do whatever you want as long as you're not attacking my mechs. And the two mechs in particular that did that need to be taught a lesson. That Centurion... Confirmed. Can almost be left for dead. You got it. Engaging target. Good. Target That's down. the last one of the Liu Battlelands. And no, let's just move over Mind here. Me, Moving out. And we're bracing. Just oh, to conserve yeah. some energy. The Urby starts to uh, get exposed. What is he going to do in return? Oh, he wanted that extra kill. He's not backing down. He is Ready not backing down. Good to go. Right here. Uh, let's use Vigilance, move up. Beat the cake. And this here should almost be a kill. Target eliminated. Well, too bad. 
for the Irby pilot. I somewhat appreciated what he was trying to do. The Vindicator, by the way, is still alive. And the Irby got two kills, which is, I think, the MVP on the enemies. Try Amy next time. See what you get. Good, moving up. Decision striking to reduce his initiative. And that blackjack will pay for what he's done. He had a couple of good hits. I'll give him that. I hear ya. Don't need to tell me twice. Moving up. And let's fully unload. And this potentially could be a kill. Oh, <laughs> he has no more weapons. Well, it's at that point that he realized he has fucked up. And this here is a mech graveyard. Show him what you got. What are your orders, Skipper? What can I do for you? Done. Good. Time to get rid of him. Target neutralized. Mission successful. What a fun mission. Like I said, potentially my favorite mission in the entirety of the game that I've uh, played because it is seldom that you're uh, going to have an all out battle with multiple factions. But I personally absolutely enjoy that. Um, sometimes hiding behind uh, the ally, letting them take the first hits. Sometimes taking the hits for my ally, either way, is fine. So yeah, we had the chance to go with either of the three factions. I should have gone with House Liu, to be honest but I was misreading the text. Whatever. It is what it is, uh, which means we will potentially not uh, be eligible for any missions in this quadrant. There are worse uh, things than that. Maybe we'll find another flashpoint. Let's see where we, where we will go. Good. The Torrents are happy that we have helped them, of course. And for us, it was sort of a misunderstanding. We should have gone with the Capellian Confederation. Well, Exchanger minus 10% weapon heat is what we needed. Got two quick draws, one Black Knight. That is great. Oh, we got an entire Black Knight. That indeed is great. LRMs, a Wolverine as a potential upgrade. Okay, so if we look at the command center, yeah, nothing that we really could do. We could have uh, gotten some options here. Yeah, but that didn't work out. Okay. So we got a Wolverine. Wolverine is tendentially a small upgrade over some of uh, the others, like the Griffin. We could definitely work with it. And we got a full-fledged, fully loaded uh, Black Knight. That definitely is an upgrade over uh, some of the others. I think we can retire the Hunchback. It has a lot of firepower with 260. But it won't be able to fully deploy that firepower. The Griffins, the, the Hunchback does no longer have uh, the 
the ability to compensate the heat. So we're looking at what? On the other hand, having having the hunchback might make sense. I'll leave it here for now. Let's let's see what we want to deal with. We haven't yet worked with a cataphrag, really. But we could try to upgrade the Black Knight, which is a fantastic laser boat. So let's start with refitting it and let's see what the shop allows us to buy. Black Knight, one of the strongest uh, heavy mechs. So having this guy with us, fantastic option. And it's potentially an upgrade to the other mechs. So PPCs will need to go, maximize the armor. Let's get rid of the large laser. I like the ranged idea uh, that they're coming with, but in reality, it's not that good. Small laser needs to go. All right, medium laser, medium laser, medium laser, medium laser. More medium lasers. And we're looking at like what, 200 damage. Okay, good. Let's check the store really quick. Flamers, AC20s, gyros are available here, but nothing else that we would need. Too bad. Okay, so... If we were to go with a few more large lasers, we're still having tonnage left over, right? So, small laser it is here, small laser it is here. And we're looking at 250 damage. From an equipment perspective, let's get that exchanger in. Some plus energy weapons would not be bad, but we only had one of those. Yeah, we, we would need upgraded medium lasers. The ones that like medium laser plus plus the ones that deal more damage then the black knight would be even more scary it soaks a lot of heat and kind of for that brawler role it would be doing a fantastic job as is Okay, hmm, are we going to go for more, La uh, for, for more heavier lasers? I'm thinking, so the advantage would be, of course, range advantage it goes kind of without saying. But there, it would also be an advantage um, to have a higher alpha strike. I feel though that 255 isn't too bad as an, as an alpha strike. Specifically, if you just look at how little armor we need to trim, like that's a fully armored, almost fully armored, just minor tweaks. And we're still very uh, energy efficient. Laser-wise, let's get that laser plus in here. I 
I think that that is a fair build. Having a heavier laser boat, we could always upgrade for even more. But that will require better small lasers as well. And mainly better medium lasers. Eight medium laser, just as, uh, flat, uh, as hard points, are fantastic. You could go as far as put all medium lasers in here. Like, how much are we losing for that? Let me just see. 25, and that guy is 40, so 15 points of damage. I think there could be even an argument made to go for that. Slight reduction firepower to 240. But at the same time, we could either go and use some jump jets or alternatively let's just go with that yeah that's almost over killing it that's almost over killing it So we'd be looking at like what? A heat differential of 10. Because the small lasers typically do not engage. At the same time, we would be like online every single round with the medium lasers. I don't know, I think a large laser, one large laser is potentially advantageous in the build. Still slightly okay-ish with, uh, with this, this is a 30 heat differential and we can always like turn off the heavy laser. Either way would work for me. How much? Uh, is a heavy jump jet that's one ton yeah i figured they they become quite heavy a little bit later and we only got three so far so we gotta save some more but yeah with four jump jets it isn't bad either with all of the medium lasers if you have the amount to uh the option to sink the heat because you can uh you can uh jump in get three maybe four evasion blips into the woods um, and you can easily go behind uh, someone uh, someone else. So the Black Knight isn't bad when it comes uh, to that. Let me just try something just for the sake of uh, the argumentation. So medium lasers and we're going for jump jets. That and that and that. We only have three jump jets. And let's get another sink in. So heat-wise, we're fine. And an average jump heat of six. Okay, okay. Let me just try that and see how how well that is going to work. We're losing some firepower, but we're still pretty strong at uh, 200, potentially a little bit more. And with the jump jets, we could even engage the small lasers. So. Let's go with that build. Right. I'll get it in the schedule. Good. The other one is the Wolverine. Just double checking what we would end up with. Usually it's um, it's one of the better medium mech options for brawlers. Putting in SRMs. Let's get some SRM ammunition. Putting in some medium lasers. I remember why I didn't like it because it had that head slot, right? Not fantastic, but still okay. And it was a complete SRM boat. Uh, that'll be 20 per shot. And if you're going for a complete SRM boat, potentially more ammunition
Good, so let's put in a heat sink. There's no point in going for the ballistic hard point. That effectively won't uh, won't work for the mech. But yeah, that could be the Wolverine put go with 160. Yeah, with SRM 6s++, it goes up quite a bit because uh, those weapons are nasty. I realize that since we don't have an LBX to um, really give him some more firepower here, we would, I, I would like to get him to that level of firepower, but we're definitely missing the tonnage in order to get that. Uh, with the LBXs and good SRMs that could have been done, I am not going to bother uh, changing too much here. The guy for now can get stored. That's fine. We're just repairing this one here. And we do not have an upgrade for anything else, do we? Potentially not. Okay, cool. Good. That brings us to the star map. Could do another flashpoint here. That's a, that's a fun flashpoint. How long will this one last? Forever. Okay. Trying to get to a flashpoint that is sort of near. 30 days. Oh boy. The traveling times are actually messed up. You're always being incentivized to travel really, really long. I don't have enough to do for 38 days, to be honest. That's, that's the whole problem here. I like to do this flashpoint, but not at all cost. So the underlying system here is good, but does not have pirate activity, so that'll be a bit wasteful. This here is working against the pirates. Hmm. What's the underlying system looking like? Two and a half, we can work with that. 18 days is not too bad. Maybe there is an option to betray the Torian um, employer and work for the pirates. Overall, this is an Arctic world, which is good. We can do a couple of jobs here. There is no pirate activity. That's the problem. So give me those sweet, sweet three and a half school sectors. Like that. 20 days, no pirates. Okay. Over here, no pirates. Down there, that's already 30 days, 32 days. Okay, we've kind of maneuvered ourselves into far, far into that space, which sort of brings us back to the three and a half um, uh, schools here. Again, no pirates, uh, but the Draconius Combine is here and the Capellian Confederation, both of which we could theoretically work for, but not in that high in that high level. So we got three schools. What else? A couple of pirates over here. 22 days. That might be the winner. 27. 25 days. And we're getting closer. Pirates as well. Waterworld. That here could be an option. 27 days. But no pirates. 31 is too long. 22 or 25. Arguably the 25 uh, five ones are better because it's a tiny bit closer. What is this guy here? Tournament of Champions. Oh, that is the tournament. So I was wrong. This flashpoint here is something else. Hmm. You know what? Let's go to this flashpoint here. It's another 
underlying three and a half star system it's only 22 days and from there we might be able to fly uh, down uh, there the other option is this system here water world which does have a couple of organizations that we can could work for the problem is if there are too many organizations the chance of pirate missions is naturally declining right so what's that underlying system here going to look like no pirate difficult decision i think we're going to go here because we do have a flashpoint so there are at least some missions that were uh, that we will be able to do Good. Now the extra uh, travagant lifestyle becomes more and more costly. And see, the problem is we have all of those mechs here, and they all of a sudden begin to cost a lot, which also tells me we might not need all of the mechs in the mech bay. Maybe that cataphract that we've built up. You know what? That's Cataphrag is potentially the one that we need the least. But I want to at least showcase it once so we're not going to get rid of it immediately. And I'm still not sure if it has the ECM built in. Those upgrades you asked for are online, Commander. Alright, ship upgrades. Trainings modules are good. The beta pods would allow us for faster healing times. That's the only thing that I really care about and better training modules. But the question is, is it worth paying additional funds every single time? Uh, potentially. Let's just go with it. Then we can upgrade the mat bay. That'll cost a lot. The rest is much cheaper. Good, investigate carefully. We're at 49 morale. Which means only one more morale and we are capped, which is exactly where I wanted to be. Getting a lot of resolve every single round. We're going to skip the travel real quick. There we go. Returning just when we hit orbit. First things first, contracts. Potentially zero of them doable for us because we don't have the faction or the standings. And what a surprise, right? However, the Torians and the Liu could theoretically be okay after the Flashpoint. But the Flashpoint is going to happen in the next episode. I think for now we're fine. The very last um, type of activity that we're going to do is upgrading our pilots. We want that call shot bonus on Hogfight. Good to go. Lily finally gets multi shot. Training confirmed, Commander. Right here. Mox has survived so many missions, he becomes one of uh, the most experienced pilots. Holy moly. Training He's already at seven gunnery. Good job, Mox. Standing by. Reaper gets that call shot bonus just because it is so good. Yes, Commander. Skipper. Awaiting orders. What's up? Commander? Standing by. Good. All right, kind of brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you for watching, guys. As always, appreciate your support. Leave a comment and a like down below, and see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.